Jack Marshman, absolute pleasure, man. Cheers, mate. Um, I don't know if you realise, I'm pretty sure the last time we saw each other in person was in Afghan, in that patrol base that was west of Nakilabad Calais. What was that PB called? Were you were there with Andy Waters and everyone else. What was that called? Tofan. Tofan. Yeah, Tofan. Yeah, That's yeah. the last time we saw each other in person. I'm yeah, fucking it sure of like it. 2010, 2010, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. It was Christmas. <laughs> I was I was I was sent the missus yesterday. I said, fucking I haven't seen it since then. And it was it was it was Christmas Eve or it was Christmas night. Because all of the mail came into Kamar, into the HQ, yeah, the yeah, company yeah, HQ yeah. was. And we filled our burgens up with all the parcels for Tofan. Yeah. And we, we tabbed in, in, we right, tabbed yeah. over. We tabbed over at night, <laughs> delivered you all your all your Christmas gifts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then shower, we left. Shower gel and that. <laughs> yeah, and then we left at dawn the next morning. We got bumped on the way back. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, yeah. It was the last time. That was last time. 2010, yeah. Fuck it. Eleven years ago, man. <laughs> that was 2010. When uh, we were talking about this just before the podcast started, uh, you signed for the UFC while you were still serving. Yeah. What was that like? Like in in hindsight, because now you've been out, right? And you've 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 you're. In the mixed martial arts, professional mixed martial arts world, out like normal, like everyone else does. How does that contrast with what it was like preparing and fighting when you were serving? What was that like? It's a different. It's a different world. If I was, I would have never have got nowhere near as far as I did if it wasn't for the army backing me. But at the same time, I wasn't training like the rest of the guys. Like you know, the not like I said, the normal people. I wasn't training like I when I was in the army. I fought for my first world title. I want to say it was about it was about 2010, about the same sort of time as what you're saying. I fought for my first world title, and the way I got ready for it, I fought Tom Watson. He was a big name. He trained out in America full time with all the best athletes, and I was like, I was out, I was out doing normal company bullshit like we do every single day, and then go do three twos on the pads in the corridor with one of the lads who was like an amateur boxer who had like fucking you know five fights or something. Who was that? Uh, Adam Martin, he sold the pads for you know, he's <laughs> little Martin, and he used to just hold the pads for me like a couple of rounds on the pads, and that was me preparing for a world title. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like the army was good because I was financially stable and all that, but at the same time, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fucking, I wasn't training like a professional athlete. I was training like, you know, I think we was on the gangsters pasties and <laughs> and all that shit, and just not living. No, no living like a pro, like it's you know, it's like you know the rage, like we're idiots. But then you went and smashed what you went and smashed Watson, didn't you? He, I remember that fight. He he he, he beat me, but I I, I should have never like like on paper, I should have never really even been in with him. But I stuck it on him. I put it over him in the first round. I got caught. I got caught with a stupid thing, and the fight was stopped a bit. Like it was a bit shit, really. But. Um, yeah, I like I was twenty one years old and or maybe twenty years old and it was like no one even thought I should have been in that fight really. Like but yeah, yeah, it was good, it was good. But like I said, I'd fucking if I'd have prepared for that fight I would have I would have walked it, but I just I was finishing cleaning weapons at the armory and then fucking go go do a couple of couple of rounds on the pads and then and then that was my preparation whilst he's out in Albuquerque training with John Jones and shit like that. I mean, we weigh up the options, like it don't make sense to it. So here's a question then. How did you what how did you manage to get in that position to be at that level where you were in the in the ring at that the ring, in the octagon at that time with Tom Watson when you were still serving? How did you get that? What was it what I, what set you apart? <laughs> what how did you get there? Generally I ain't just I ain't going about the power edge thing, but I just registered out most of the fights, mate. Like when you know I me, mean? it was plenty of fights that I could have lost. Like everyone knows the Carl Noon fight and that, but it's like I just raised it up. It was just too tough for our own good sometimes. I mean, we just have scraps and yeah. So it was like I some I technically I probably wasn't as good as some of the guys I beat, but I was you know just we just added out. Like, That's what I, th I was thinking of the Carl Noon fight. Yeah, when yeah. you meant I was thinking the Carl Noon fight. I remember I, watching that. I got and going, a great oh story, but that, that was because I was like a Joe Bag in three par at the time i was a joe bag just just rocked up and then we was way on exercise and i got offered the call the call known fight and it was like i fought all the other shows i'd fought on was all like in leisure centers you know small little shows and stuff like that and i got offered this i got offered the call known fight and it was televised in the nec arena in birmingham it was like a big thing it was like i got offered it so they let me have two days two days off the end of the exercise free part of mega <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? so they let me they, they let me have that 
I went in, obviously, I got, I, I won the fight, but I got fucked up. I looked like sloth off the goonies. My face was like, uh, and I, um, I rock, rock back up like on the Sunday because we've, we've jumped in Bryce Norton on the Monday, rock, rocked up, right? <laughs> and three, three o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, I was on the parade square like that. Uh, and I can't remember, you know, I wish I could remember, but whoever the sergeant major was of the company at the time, like, uh, like walked on the line. And oh, oh, it was Tiddy. Was it not Tiddy? No, it was it was it was after the it was uh, it was before we took over for the 2010. This was uh, oh. the Carl Noon fight was probably about 2008 2009. What company were you? I was I was a company straight away. And this yeah. what year? 2009. 2008 2009. It was uh, oh hang on who was that? That was Tiddy. No no t t t Tiddy was 2010 like just before the 2010 tour. He was, wasn't he? He, well, t he was. No, Danny Leach. Danny Leach was oh, a yeah. cut sergeant major. Anyway, you've been punching the face yeah, too much. Yeah. Go on, <laughs> I, I, carry I on. I punched him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, whoever it was, like, I literally, because I didn't realise, because obviously it was my first fight on TV and stuff, like, I didn't realise all the blokes had watched it. I was a Joe bag. So I turned up on the parade square at 3 o'clock in the morning, and fucking my face is... Like ah, uh, like lumps coming off the side of my head. Like uh, and he walked on a parade square, and he straight away, whoever it was, just went, went fucking, ah, oh, good fight, mate, well done. Like I was like, he was like, he said, what the fuck are you doing here? I was like, I was like, oh, I was told to be here three o'clock in the morning, sir. Like uh, he went like I said, put your fucking helmet on. <laughs> like I tried to put my helmet on, and my face was that swelled. It was like, <laughs> my helmet was like, he went, he said, fuck off home. <laughs> just sent me home like I was like but you know because you know it's like Joe Bag you don't want to be the guy who don't turn up to a parade at three o'clock in the morning because he's you're just gonna be the dickhead who like you probably got fucking blocks knocking your door like but yeah I just remember I was brilliant it was like he just turned up he said put your helmet on it was like slanted to the side my face looked like the gun of goonies like <laughs> yeah, yeah funny man it's uh I <clears throat> I I've wondered for a while what they put in the water in three para it's like <laughs> It's it's strange, isn't it? It's like you've got different units known for different things, right? And power reg, I think, generally known for boxing. But if you're within power reg, you know a three para. They, they, yeah, it's like that's yeah, the thing, boxing. Yeah. We, you know, we went for years with it. So I don't know how we did it either. It's like weird. So what what is making this different? You know, we don't we don't have the benefit of choose. Oh, we'll have boxers come to three para. It's not. We just happen to have a fucking pedigree there. Yeah. Of the coaching, Coach, coaching staff. Coaching's that. what I put it exactly, down to, yeah. exactly right from Ned Cameron right there, right yeah, back, even and to Tyler Tiddy Johnson and, and all yeah. like, like like all of them brilliant. Yeah. Like, but then, uh, and then and, and and like that and and now it's going into the the MMA thing. You've got. It's like it's almost like the MMA thing is overshadowing the boxing side of things. So you got you, you got uh, Kev, Kev Fryer, Kev yeah, Fryer, yeah, you got Cam, Cameron else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then who else? there's a, there's some others in there. Who, who are, there's there's a few MMA fighters, but like that the the three you said did like you got two boys in the UFC, one in Bellator. All right, I don't think I don't I I might be wrong, but. You can look. I I very much doubt. There's, I don't know any other serving military that are in Bellator or UFC or any. I, I really Terry don't. Brazier. What's Terry Ter Brazier? Well, well, he, well he, he was Bellator for age. He's recently retired. I, I, um, what unit was he? Well, he right. So he was he was guards para, but he transferred over. Ah, he was so right, he yeah. put again. He was free para, so he was free para for like when he finished his career as free para. So that's two Bellator and two UFC fights, all in free para. It's fuck. Mad, isn't it? That's mental. It's like having that's having like. I can four professional football players in 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 one unit, which is you know is unheard of, is it? Uh, yeah, but then another circle that you're involved with, again, what are they putting in the water? What is Shaky Shaw putting in the water? And yeah, fucking, yeah, what yeah. was he putting in the water? And I would tell him, yeah, yeah. You got you, you got Jack Shaw, you got how many? You got many... Brett Johns is in now, like he's from Swansea, but he come down to us because because of the pedigree. Um, we got loads of, and like, as far as like the cage warriors level and stuff like that, we, our gym's full of them. We got boys that, you know, are either on their way to being the champions on cage warriors or, or you know, or close or, or going to be in the future. We got, oh, it's a brilliant gym. And we've opened like a mega facility now, so it's, it's uh That's in Cardiff, isn't it? No, it's, it's in, it's in Abdelady, just, just outside it, but it's, uh, Obviously, I've been I've been to America and trained at all these big gyms and stuff like you know like like uh, Jackson's and other gyms. <laughs> I've um yeah so I've I've been I've been there and trained at all these other gyms, and the gym we got in in Wales, which is meant to say like in Wales, we've got a facility that can 
challenge them. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and, and now we got so many good fighters coming through. We're only we catching up with America so quickly. We are. Yeah, so here's a question for you, which leads in nicely. So here's a question. One of, one of the Patreon supporters came up. I'm sure. It, what did it come up? I can't. Remember. Oh no. Do you know what? I think. I think. Well, I, so you asked it. Steve Llewellyn. Remember Steve Llewellyn? Yeah, yeah, free right. bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Steve Llewellyn, uh, he he asked the question. I said, "Are you coming on?" He asked the question. He said, um, "You know, a lot of fighters as they move up, uh, they move from whatever into the UFC, you get the pinnacle of what their of their career, or potentially the pinnacle of their career, and they often move to other gyms and they uh, take advantage of of other gyms and and um, coaches and shit like that." Why did you decide to stay with? T this is not a. Uh, this is not. A, uh, this is not a. Um, not saying it's a bad thing, but what was your thought process with staying the way you were? Um, well, just a good, good little look at it. Is did you notice like the, with McGregor losing recently? They're saying that he completely changed his team and went somewhere different. You know, when he got to the level he did, and then that's when he started losing. I've I've always think if they if they can get you where you're going. Why not? And I, I have been to other gyms. I've been to America and trained and trained, and I didn't feel like I was benefiting any more out there than I do under Shakey. And I'm comfortable at Shakey's. Do you know what I mean? So happy fight is a good fighter. Do you know what I mean? It's like I love I love it there. Do you know what I mean? And and it just you can't you can't well you, there's no argument for saying that you that level end there because we've got like in twenty thirty IU level professionals in our gym. Do you know what I mean? Is you, I didn't need to go anywhere. The only problem I had is the way I'm a bigger lad, you know, weight weight wise, we we struggle we struggle for like my level in the gym. Oh, so decent size sparring. Yeah, yeah. So like, like there's not like fucking if you're a bantamweight in my gym, you you sparring some of the best boys in the world. Like you've got Jack Shaw, Brett Johns, uh, Josh Reed, Lord, like you were sparring like you you mean in your oil. So you've got amateurs coming through now. That are going to be brilliant because they're training with the best boys in the world. But uh, when as soon as you get up to my sort of weight category, middleweight and a little bit heavier and stuff like that, this I, I got old Ban Elliott to train with now. But you know he's still a little bit smaller than me. But but other than that, we're the two biggest and the two better lads in the gym. You know what I mean? We we could do with it. But and then when you go to America, you got a lot more you know big fucking lumps and that over there. But you just make do what we do. I I still train a bit more like the old fashioned way anyway. I. I go boxing and I spar with boxers and I go wrestling and wrestle and I go grappling and go, do you know what I mean? So you don't so much, because it's hard to find another middleweight in the UK that's, you know, good at everything that I can spar with. Whereas, like, if I go, I can go boxing and I can spar people that are better than me at boxing. I can go wrestling and there's people who are better than me at wrestling. I can go grappling, do you know what I mean? And I still do it that way. I've always, that's how I've always done it. So I stick to it, and it, it worked. Like it got me where I went. So, so, our, so if that's the old, if that's the traditional way, how's it being done now? Is that it's is it is, they, is they, that they, they general call, mixed martial arts yeah, as they, an they, art they, itself? They, they, they call it the new breed. Like that's what they call them as fighters. They go, oh, the oh, new breed of fighters is people who were not like from a boxing background, gone into MMA. They 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 just they've gone yeah. into MMA. They MMA fighters. They they're good everywhere. From the start, like, but do you, do you think that's a better way of doing it, or do you think you should start with being a master in something and then bre that's and a, branching that's out? A, that's how I like it. But obviously, it swings around. So no matter what, if you start at MMA, you're going to be better at one of them than the other. You you you've got to, like to everyone think everyone thinks I'm a I'm a, I was doing MMA before I started boxing, but I'm classed as a yeah I I didn't know that. Yeah, you're a boxer. Uh, yeah, no, I I had my first. Um, my first amateur MMA fight was 2007 before I joined the army. Do you know what I mean? It's like, um, when I joined the army, do you know when you do your first four weeks and then you your parents come up for a weekend, don't they? For a visit. Instead of my parents coming up for a weekend, I went home and fought for a title, I did. <laughs> an, an amateur title, like two fights in one night. That's what, uh, at, at MMA that was. But then I went to three para and, my, and where I had the privilege of being able to box with, you know. Because boxing the, was massive at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where, they, where, where I was smashed on that daily with boxing, you know what I mean? Like you're sparring like five times a week, which is ridiculous. No wonder I'm fucking bunch drunk. It's a fucking, you, like free para, you know, that's how they, they train, don't they? Just kill each other 
kill each other five times a week. And, you know, but it obviously works because we win the championships every time we fucking enter it. Man, I remember rocking up one day and I was a, when, I, when I first became a platoon sergeant and boxing season came around. I, I call it boxing season. It's, yeah. in, it's the season where pl- people disappear from your platoon just randomly and you go, <laughs> right, everyone rocks up for a brief and you're expecting 20 odd people. Oh, in you the do the normal roll and go, where the fuck is private such and such? And like, uh, and Tiddy was a sergeant major. Oh, it. for sure. Right, it's like, Tiddy's robbed him for the boxing. Where's such and such? Tiddy's robbed him for the boxing as well. Where's such and such? Tiddy's robbed six, seven people down. I remember walking into I remember walking into the hangar opposite uh, Three Paras like office lines there. Um, I remember walking in. Well, no, I wasn't walking. I walked past, and everyone was in there. Session going on. A bag session going on, and everyone's in respirators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, now let's stick. Uh, obviously, uh, gas masks. Uh, training and gas yeah. like um, I. I, I, literally, I literally, obviously, just before I just before I got out, I went back. I went back. I was back with Freepower, and I was helping Tyler Johnson do the boxing. They are still training like that's like fucking. They they still do respirators. So what do you reckon about it? Well, so in that in that method of training, right. hardcore right. going for it, right. short term and long term. What's your yeah. opinion on it? Right. So if you want to fight like at the like level I'm fighting at, I benefit probably as and nay, right? But you fighting at an amateur level. It's proven. Free power have proved it. The fittest, strongest guy is going to win. It, you you got a box for you got a box for six minutes, three twos. If you can fucking constantly punch for three two minute rounds and you can keep walking for, you're going to win the fight. It's it's how it's it's facts. And free power are so good at it. They dr- they drill you so much. You you are the fittest, strongest boxers in it every time. And that's that's it. Ain't no secret to why free power wins it. Because what is it? Is it like twenty years that they've any time that Free Power have entered the championships, they've won it. It wasn't 20, but you know, yeah, it, it wasn't it, 20, so it was something well, like... Up, <laughs> it, I know, yeah. It was something like, and, and there's going to be people going, no, hey, fucking, we're fucking 20. It was something like eight years, where for eight years or nine years on the trot, Three Power were... Yeah, the, but I mean, I'm talking about even with the gap, so, you know, like when they didn't enter it because the Oh, no, it was only was once. It was only once they didn't enter it. That's, was it? So, yeah, so uh, on eight or nine, it was over eight or nine years. I, I know, Teddy... In fact, let's give him a shout. Steve Tidmarsh. <laughs> Steve Tidmarsh, <laughs> like fucking boxer. Yeah. He'll be, he'll be, he'll be listening to this. It, there's a, it was eight or nine years where three power where the British Army boxing champions on the trot, with the exception of one instance, which is well, where he didn't enter a team because we were on ops. And that was 2008, I think it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. 2008. Yeah. And then I think Anglians won it. Or I can't remember who it was, won it. But it's a good point. I hadn't thought of it like that, actually. Because I, I it's always one. It's why I said you to start while they put it in the water. Like fucking hell, it doesn't make. To me, it doesn't make it's, sense that like you can have that consistency when the the team isn't the same team all the way through. The reality is, it's like from the, in that eight or nine years or whatever it was, it's not the same boxing team all the way through. It's well, rotating. Well, and even the coaches didn't say the same. It, it, well, this will answer your question though. So when I went back to the, when I went back to through my last time. Uh, so when I went on my first ever boxing team with Teddy as a coach, right? First ever boxing team, I was on there with Tyler Johnson. And when I went back, Tyler Johnson was the coach. So the way we trained when we was boxing is the way he trained his fucking boxers and he gave him no choice. Like so it's stuck with him. Do you know what I mean? That's how that's how it's always gone. It's like, yeah, I think t- the back end, people started working more on skill. Like, you know, it is a lot more skill session involved. Like they got they got um Connor Vian Treat any professional boxer, shit or boxer. He's he's teaching them skills, but the main the main thing is fucking hills, brains, bag legs, uh, respirator treat. You they're the fittest, strongest boxers, isn't it? They're gonna win every time, without a doubt. Why did you? Uh, if you were if you were look, did you were you looking to embark on a, a professional MMA career before you joined then? No, 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 I. <laughs> fucking hell! I'd, I'd like fought for world titles. I'd, 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 I'd fought for loads. I wouldn't look into be a. I wouldn't look into do it full time then. I just fucking enjoyed it. I just enjoyed having a fight, and it was, it was like I never. It was only I only sort of sort of taken it serious when I got to the UFC, which is mental because I'd had 20, <laughs> 25 pro fights before I'd even got there. What did you join up for? I I was. I was a nuisance, like I was uh, in a lot of trouble back home, and I was sort of like, you know, 
join join the army and fuck off like and I, I didn't know nothing about pirate edge they know nothing about pirate edge I, I i was like i was like a i was like a 17 stone kid but i had a really good run time they was like they was like fuck hey you can run they said and and the, it was like a royal welsh recruiter and he just went oh mate he said fuck you, you fuck. he said you should go you should go pirate edge i was like what well, fuck's that i'd never been on a plane i'd never even been on a plane then first eight times i jumped nah. oh, fuck guy yeah you serious yeah 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 i'd never even i fucking don't like flying <laughs> Man, no, i don't i don't i patch I, like if i'm on a plane i'm like like i rolled in the girls and got <laughs> you know what i mean it's like uh but my first so I'd never been on a plane, and then obviously I was like, join Pirate Edge. I was like, and then got the head of training. He's like, yeah, you've got to jump out of planes. I was like, oh, yeah, right, makes sense. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Jesus Christ. First yeah. time you ran on the plane was when you jumped out of it. That's yeah. unbelievable. First That's eight, didn't it? You do your course, and then, and then like, I think the ninth one was straight off, can <laughs> so, so you joined up because you were a fucking nuisance. What was it? Was, what, so what was it like growing up? Oh, I, I um, yeah, I just seen loads of trouble. I got locked up a lot. You, 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 run, you were on the area, run there? Or? No, um, I'm from a place called Abdullary, I am. And, um, so is, is Abdullary where you're from? Is it? I yeah, yeah, I yeah. Oh, okay. Like, it's mad. Like, when you say about sinking in the water, do you know all them boys you mentioned, like, from our gym, all the lads who've got Big Jack Show and all that, that we are all from Abdullary. It's like a small little town, and it's fucking, like, but... 20 pro fighters here and then not to mention then just on the roads new bridge where kawasaki gavin reese all like it's right why josh why what 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 why what is the reason you hear about this through different things throughout the years from different pockets of areas and just produce absolute ninjas at this that the other well I, like i i've i think i've said what i think the reason free part i've done well for but i couldn't explain to you how the fuck this is god like that in wales it's it's mad it's like well even with even with the boxing like i said like with kawasaki gavin reese all all all, all, all them they, and it was loads more than i you had enzo mattarelli in that training there you had um, well sean mccall if i mentioned earlier he trains at at uh, Enzo's um gym. Yeah, like in Swansea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Worship. Yeah. Oh, you've been up there, haven't you? Is no, no, en Enzo's really good friends with uh, like John Phillips. The I, other thought Welsh boy. I thought you'd been up there. No, yeah. no. Um Yeah, no, I um but it's just like it's hard to explain how they all like how how that boxing was so good. Now it's going over into MMA. We got a lot of because obviously me and Jack Shaw are in the UFC from it, but we got loads of young lads that are coming through now that give them, give them three or four years, they'll be there. Do you know what I think it might be? Do you know what I think it might be? In all seriousness, just in, in generalising. So, in, like, I, obviously I grew up but fucking half hour from Abbott's I grew up in, like, uh, the, in Dallas Valley, so crying and Seven Sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all that, that area. And you know what I think it might be? Is that um, in, those, in those situations, at that... Uh, we can't talk for, like, the kids over there now, but in our, like, our, our sort of generation, is that... There ain't much to do, no. right? And you're either going to latch on to, the, in the, especially in the valleys scene, you're either going to latch on to sort of the, the uh, out and about doing shit, bus stops and fucking whatever, and, and maybe drugs get involved or not. Or quite often the case, especially when I was growing up, I remember it was, there, was, there was particular focuses that lots of the same groups of kids went and did. And I'm talking, when I say kids, I mean... 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. The, the, the key formative years of what you're going to do. And it was where I grew up in Crinant. It was, at the time, it was rugby I was gonna say, yeah. and or gym, as in weightlifting, or the both together. And so you got a, you had a lot, of, uh, lot of really good rugby players, international rugby players, um, or we had a lot of people who got caught for steroids. <laughs> 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 Couldn't do it anymore. Get a ball fight. It may be it's the case of in the Abbotsley area, area and surrounding areas, it's that the thing that they, the, the opposite, the, the, the area of focus, aside from the normal kick about fucking bus stops and this, that, and the other smoking weed and X, Y, or Z, it's, you got that, oh, and there's an MMA gym. Yeah, well, Sheik, you opened his gym when I was about 15, 16. And I went, I was like, I, well, I, I used to train at a different gym, we, and with Sheik you trained at. Um, I used to train at a different gym, but Sheik you trained at. And then Sheik he was doing all the coaching, but the other guy was sort of like just taking the money sort of thing. And then in the end, like Sheik said, I'm branching off, I'm going to start my own gym. So I went with him because he was the only guy who was teaching me. Like, um, so that that's Go on. yeah, that's literally what happened. Please. I thought I was. 
we know going to be able to have PE halfway through. Hey, I'll be right. Are you in the piss? Yeah, already. Do you? Yeah. Go yeah. for piss? Yeah, sweet. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> How long are we in? Yeah. How long are we in? <laughs> no, this has never happened. Right, 20, 25, 12, 25 minutes. Now, go on. Thank oh, you I, very much. I, we, we did two just straight. Now, go on. Just go, go on the hedge. <laughs> so, uh, right, so um, while Jack is away, uh, this is the first time it's ever happened. I always say it to guests. Yeah, just look, if you've got a little boy's room or a little girl's room, you can go to the... Uh, you can go to the uh, you can go to the toilet, and I'll just keep talking. Right, it's the first time it's happened. This is Jack Marshman. So uh, uh, j- uh, while he's out, actually, yeah, um, he is um, obviously a UFC fighter, which I mentioned at the start of the podcast, and he's now he's basically preparing for his the next part of his uh, his next career, if you like. When we go through, when you're in the military, you very much think that um, people get. Uh, People get um, sort of blinkers on and think, oh, the military is the only career they have. Where in reality, when you do 20, 22, 24 years, when you leave, you've got time enough for a second career. It's very much the same with any any professional sport, really. So that's what Jack's gearing up for now. He's back in. You've done? That was quick. Yeah. You've, you've popped the seal now. <laughs> oh, shit. Actually, I was talking away there without being on the fucking camera as well. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. Um, shake the gym. Yeah, shake. Well, so then, obviously. When he branched off and started his own gym, I followed him and um, that like you come into my they 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 was their muse that you was talking about like the like your fourteen fifteen sixteen like we well, you make your choice whether you're gonna be a little fucking nuisance and do whatever or or be in the gym and uh, I think he sort of changed a lot of kids' lives that sort of especially in his early days he like loads of lads could have gone one way and they went the other way even lads who come out of jail, you know, who'd gone the wrong way, and then they come out of jail and then go straight in the gym and they've never gone back and they've all got good jobs and stuff now. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. What, what, what's different about him? What's different about the gym? Why, why, why did you as a renegade decide to stay there? <laughs> like, was it a combination of personality and also the, the fighting side of things? He, uh, probably more personality. He's, br- he's obviously a brilliant coach. His jiu-jitsu is amazing, yeah, and he got an I- IQ about fighting. He can sit, no, like, do you know, like, like Customato with, um, like, Tyson. He, obviously, Customato wasn't teaching fucking Tyson how to throw punches, was he? Little old man wasn't teaching Tyson how to throw punches, but he had an IQ about fighting, but what was right, what was wrong, and that's exactly what he does with fighters, you know, he can sit there and he'll, he, he's intelligent, he'll watch someone fight and he'll know how to beat them, you know what I mean? And he'll tell you how to beat them, he'll train you how to beat them, you know what I mean? you just got to go in there and do it. But, um, yeah, so... The reason I said, but you, you asked, was it more that side of things or personality? It's probably personality shaky. You you train with him for, you speak to him for five minutes. He's funny as fuck, and he's he's mental, and he do he do care about his fighters as well. Like he like he knew when I was a little shit and all that. He he push you even now, even like you know if I end in the gym, it's like he'll be on my case, but not not for his benefit, just for me. Like he'll just be like, come on, but you need to be back in the gym now after if you have a loss. Or something like that. if you have a loss or something, you know what I mean? You'd like you have a little strop and you don't want to be in the gym for a bit. You're showing like he'll be on your case saying, Come on, but <laughs> get back he, on the horse, yeah, yeah, stop being a fan. He'll get back in the gym, that's what he's like, you know what I mean? So he's, he's good. He, well, he, he like you say, you can't, you can't dis, you can't disagree with it when you just look at what he've, what he've produced. Like, mm, you can't, I know, I agree, yeah. I'm just trying to understand it, it's and, like, and what, I'm like, because. I'm one of the ones that he'd literally done from scratch as well. So I've got where I've gone. You know, I've only ever trained with Shaky for Shaky. That's and and he got me that far. So you can't. It ain't like you know because what happens now? Someone was good at another gym or whatever, and then they've come to us later on in their career. You know, it's a little bit different. And you know, you've not fully trained him. Like from me, he trained me from not knowing how to throw a fucking punch to everything I've ever done. Like so. Was that where you started with the MMA training then? Yeah, yeah, I was un- I was under Sheik. We was under this little gym called the Falcons, and Sheik, he was fighting himself. When I, that's fucking make me feel old now. Like, Sheik, he was fighting when I started, so I was training, but he, you know, because he was one of, he was the main fighter at the gym. But he, so he was MMA or, or yeah, Jiu Jitsu? Yeah, fight? M- MMA. Yeah, oh, okay. he fought MMA. Right. He had pro MMA fights and that. He, um, like, one, probably one of the first 
MMA fights I ever went to watch was shaky. When with Jack Shaw, is a, like, I don't know if you've ever seen it. I've put a picture up of me and Jack Shaw, and he's like, we're at his dad's fight. He's like a little fat kid. <laughs> <laughs> you see him, you know, like a USC superstar, like, just killing everyone. Like, it's, it's mental. But, um, yeah, we, um, like, she was one of the first fights I watched, and then I sat with him. Like I said, his personality, you train with him for five minutes, you love the guy, he's funny, man. He just, he's brilliant, and he's... He's a bit like the Reg in the sense of it's it's tough love. <laughs> if you're doing something wrong, you fucking let you know you're doing something wrong. Like if you're doing something right, you, you know you probably won't let you know you're doing it right. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, all right, tidy, well done. If you if you do something <laughs> shit, you'll fucking get told him shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you reckon you would have? Um, do you reckon that the your path, if you hadn't have joined up, that your path would have still taken to the UFC? Do you reckon? Or if or... I'd have joined up, you, oh, tough one, that is, because. Yeah, probably maybe a little bit quicker, maybe, you know. But when I, when I fought Watson, when I was young, it, I was told whoever won that fight was going to go to the UFC. And obviously, he, he won, right? But looking back in nine times, I'm so glad I didn't because I was fucking 21. I didn't have the skill set behind me. And if I'd have got signed then, I would have I would have lost that fight straight away and be gone, do you know what I mean? Without a doubt, do you know what I mean? It's like... Mm. In in a way, like being in the reg and you know, it, like like I said, I had twenty five pro fights before I got signed, man. So that's a that's like a, that's that's more than some of the people's careers, like all careers. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I I had that even before I got signed. So and then I'm like eight fights into the UFC now. On top of that as well, and it's like um, if if I hadn't if I hadn't done the reg and I'd you know because I I was doing stuff like going to Afghan in between. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? It's like is um. It, it gave me that time to mature as a fighter and as a as just as a fucking bloke, and then go down that route like so. It's it's getting super popular, isn't it? With MMA, I think it's uh, it's it's almost kind of worrying. It's like you don't know you don't know who you look at on the street or pick a fight with in the pub. <laughs> Not that you should pick a fight with anyone who's going to fucking tear your head off. Because it, it it again, it's that you can walk into the gym now and just start learning MMA. It, you don't have to that. You just not have boxing or jujitsu or. It's, but but no, I think it's like the jujitsu fuckers are the worst. Like because, like you know, if you go to a boxing gym, you look at a bloke and you can tell he's an hard fucker and he's he look like a boxer. Like these jujitsu, you got little skinny geeks who are like fucking <laughs> little skinny geeks, but you roll around with them on the floor and they're gonna tie you in fucking knots. Like it's mm. it's mental. Like like. What. Uh... If someone's wanting now to start start out in an MMA career and they want to do it as a profession, um, what would you what would your a, a piece of advice be to them? Like main piece of advice be? Well, just like like you said, like I probably say, go down the new breed route, you know, and see which which aspect of it you take to the what route? Like the new breed, like as in a new breed, yeah, yeah, as in saying, you know, start MMA as opposed to start jiu jitsu, boxing, or whatever, and just see which one you take to the most. You know what I mean? So, I I. If I, oh, I sound it sounds shit saying this, but I wouldn't recommend anyone trying to go into a career of MMA. As in, I think you should do it the way I done it. I never fuck. I never wanted to make any money out of fighting. I never wanted to do it as a living. I done it because I enjoyed it, and then it become a living, and then I made money. Like, don't don't set out and think, oh, you, I'm, oh, I'm gonna. I've I've had people. I get people message me on Instagram, and I like. Going, oh, I've just quit my job because I want to be an MMA fighter. And I was like, you're, you're like, well, why you've not had no fights, mate? Chill the fuck out. Like, do your job, keep fighting, and if you, you know, if you, if you think it's going some way, take the leap. But Don, uh, yeah, yeah. The only account, the only account of that is, is the cla- is the classic that um, <coughs> people. <coughs> it's uh, the, be- the what's beautiful about fighting, and it, whatever it, professional fighting, whatever that discipline maybe boxing mma fucking thai boxing kickboxing muay thai i don't know jiu-jitsu whatever is that um it is it is something that is achievable for people who can't achieve anything else for people who haven't got a job for people who get kicked out of school for people who, who, who were never in fucking school people going to parents just the most disadvantaged kids it's something that is it's like i can do that yeah yeah, but if you, if you can set your mind to do it now, you can set your mind to doing something else as well. So the best the best example I can say about it is 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 I so, no so I, I'm not, I'm not like a negative person saying no oh don't try it with me because you might not make it. But look look at look at Jack Shaw right. So he was he was born shaky his dad. He was born he was going to fight all the way. He was always going to be a fighter, and he's done really well out of it. Now he's making loads of money right. 
But he, he, went, he, went and got, he went and got a degree before that. He done university, he went and got a degree before he ever took to, you know what I mean? Like, he didn't rely on fighting being, he didn't sit there going, he was always going to be as good as he, as he is now. But he didn't fucking rely on it. He didn't think, oh no, that's me. I'm, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna work. I ain't gonna earn no money. He's like, he was valding cars and he was, he was, he was valding cars and doing other bits and bobs while getting a degree and training as a fighter. That's what. If you, if you wanna, if you really wanna set yourself to make it in, in fighting, whatever, yeah, go for it. Go for it. I ain't say, I ain't discredited saying, oh, don't, don't try it. I'm saying, fucking use your head and. You know, think about other options on top of it. That's all. You know what I mean? Because fuck it. If if you if you're stupid enough to think, oh, just because I really want to be a fighter, it means I'm gonna be a fighter. You're a fucking idiot. Yeah, and it's an interesting balance you got to strike there, right? Because especially with the like something like fighting, you to be successful at that, <clears throat> you have to be one hundred percent. I am in. I am in for this fight. I'm in for this. This. Yeah, this contract, I'm in for this. This is my profession, this is what I do. But but also, to play the long game, Jeez, it can't be all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, yeah. that's You have to. And it's the classic that you were talking in the car about um, going on the circuit. And... Uh, People go and work overseas in the circuit, you know, in security, yeah. and they and 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 that's what they get the choose to, and and that's what they're going to do, and they're going to earn money for that, and and security is a thing, and they don't have any other option. And when it goes and when it goes pear shaped, or doesn't work out the way they think it's going to work out, they got no, they got no alternative. But it's, so sort of the point of making is you need to have Plan Bs and Plan Cs, right? But that makes it an incredibly hard balance to strike. To okay, I need to be a hundred percent into Plan A. I'm going to be a fighter. But also, I need to have a plan B, just in case it doesn't work out. It's that balance, right? You have to. It's, it, but it's. I think it's about an intelligent way to go about it. You've you've talked a few. You've mentioned a few a couple of times on the podcast we started talking about um, you jokingly about being punch drunk. Talk to me about that. Yeah. What, what, yeah. what's your, where's your concerns coming from? Why I, do you think I, you're punch drunk? Well, you seem fucking well, sound well, to me. Yeah. You got, some, well, you got I, a wild uh, accent. Yeah. Well, I can. I genuinely, as I'm on the back of my car. I'm getting worried. I know I keep his little things. Do you know you start noticing things, you forget things, and like I uh, might be part of getting older. Oh, it might it might be part of getting older, but it's I it's I don't know. I if we oh, well, like what? Talk to me. Um, <laughs> like you forget stupid things. Like forget it. One of the worst examples, right? Which is for me, this is terrible. I don't think I said this to anyone. I um <laughs> I uh right after after I fought. Uh, Tiago Santos out in um, Canada. I fought him in. I fought him in Canada, and I got caught with a nasty kick. I got a scar on the back of my head, and uh, it split my head open. It did. It didn't hurt that much. It was what happened. Flying home, flying home, then like an eleven-hour flight. Recycled dirty air. Big fucking gash on the back of my head. It got infected. I was like falling asleep and waking up, and my head was stuck to the pillow, and it was like it was, it was just got like, pussing out. Like I'd be walking and be pus dribbling down my neck and stuff. But I was getting a lot of pain in it, and I thought I thought fucking there must be something on my head. And when when I had a brain scan, and it wasn't long after I'd had my daughter, and I I was like, uh, <laughs> my daughter's name is Molly Bree Marshman. And like uh, uh, Molly Bree. Molly, that's her middle name. So her name's Molly Marshman. Her middle name's Bree. But right. How are you spelling? How are you spelling Bree? B R W E. Oh, cool. I yeah, that. yeah. So, she, um, a nurse come at me, and I was here. With, I was here with my sister and my and my and my daughter, and I was like, uh, I, uh, the woman come at me, and she went, she went, oh, what's her name? And I went, fucking froze. I went. Bree, like, uh, I lied to her about what her name, like her middle name had come to me. He'd obviously, was fucking, I was in a lot of pain with the back of my head, and it was still swelled really bad. And, like, uh, and I was like, I was, I couldn't think, I, like, uh, and then I seen the nurse speaking to my sister then a couple of hours later, and I was like, like when when I'd gone, I had my brain scan and stuff. Like, it come back, it was fucking, it wasn't nothing. There was nothing wrong with my brain. <laughs> I was writing my crayons before I fucking started fighting, let alone after. As long as you're not eating the crayons. Yeah, you know. <laughs> putting up my nose and that. Yeah, but I was like, I see no speaking to my sister, and, and my sister was obviously calling my daughter Molly. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, that woman was thinking, fuck off, weirdo, what do you lie about her name for? <laughs> it's because I fucking forgot. It was like, you know what I mean? Little, but it's like, it's, it's a few things I've noticed. And then I've seen other fighters, people I'm friends with, I ain't going to say names. But 
like I, people I I speak to, and I can watch, and they keep repeating themselves to me and stuff like that, and say and without realizing, like yeah, old, yeah. They, old they, man they, stuff, yeah, like old yeah, man, yeah, like an yeah. old man, and, and they're not old men. Like I said, I can't say because no, don't, don't, like, don't but, say, don't say, but like it's like fight, and uh, like I see them, and then I start panicking and thinking, fuck, is that gonna be me now, fucking? Because this person's doing my head in right now, the way he's talking, like I, so I think I don't want to be that person now in two years, fucking repeating myself and fucking do it, like, and if you watch my fights, the way. The way I fight leads to a lot of fucking head trauma. It's like, like if 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 I if I fought like a like a slick boxer moving out the way and not getting hit so much to the head, yeah, I might have a longer career. But fucking the way I fight is like, yeah, I'm fucking eating the crayons before long. Like, so. well, it's the advantage of not getting knocked out very easily, which yeah. is great for the short term. Yeah, it may yeah. not be great for the long term. Yeah, right? that, that, that's it. That's I, mean. I I I never change my fighting style. Do you know if I go ahead, I fucking magic wish and I could change I'd still I'd still fight the way I fight I love it it's what I think a fight's meant to be you're meant to be trying to fucking kill each other it's like it's how how it's meant to be you're meant to be trying to fucking I want to hurt him really fucking bad and he want to hurt me really bad let's do it and then because I've been I've had fights which I've lost with some guy and fucking led on top of me and I've given me a cut for three rounds and I'm thinking fuck you do you think do you think we, you've won a fight there like do you, like we just had a fucking that harder scraps with misses like do you know what I mean? it's like fucking but you know, it's each to their own. What they do like, but it's like not for, not for me. I'd ra- I I like the way I fight. I'll either I'll either win by a big dog or I'll lose by a big dog. But fucking, it'll be good to watch. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I know I know what you mean, mate. I know what you mean. Um, let me ask you a question there. So what? Uh, what your last your last fight was October, wasn't it? Yeah, October first. Was that Fight that? Island? No, it was Vegas. I've, I've got it. Fight Islands, the one I haven't done, you know. But it was like, I was. I think I was due to fight on it once, and then sang, like, you know, with COVID, everything's up in here. What? Uh, so what's it? Are we talking about punch drunk? Or talk, uh, you, you, you touched on TBI. I've done a, I've done a, a few significant podcasts regarding TBIs. Um, but more on the subject, not not on the subject, but more relative to ex-military people. Um, and so it's a, it's a topic. I'm, I think I, I quite well understand it in a minute. Uh, and it's it's definitely high on the agenda of importance in the USA. I think or getting there in ter- around sports people and ex-military in terms of impact of from mild TBIs to severe TBIs, causing things like dementia-esque symptoms what what's the do you get any consent uh, like feeling from G- ufc other fight or mma in general about concern around it and what measures people are taking to try and mitigate the risk of uh long-term negative impacts of fucking head trauma yeah not not so much off anyone in particular but like just, just the way we train, and that's completely different. Now, we like fighters and coaches have clocked on uh, the way we used to train, where we used to fucking just batter each other every single day, and fucking uh, a sparring session in the gym used to be like a fight. It was the same as a fight, no different. You was fucking hurting each other. Like, um, it on it that doesn't happen so much anymore. Like people are switched on, and it's like you. You don't need you don't need to do that to get any better at sport, but that's just how we used to do it. That's how we was taught how to do it, and that's how we done it. But everyone's getting smarter and switched on to training. It's like you go like like Robbie Lawler is one of my favorite fighters, and he, you know he he fights like me like like he just has it out, doesn't he? But he says he doesn't spar anymore. He doesn't literally he hasn't sparred for years. Like the only time he's actually getting it in the face is in a fight, which fucking obviously massively reduces the amount of yeah, who's he, doesn't do it? he doesn't he doesn't do it uh, and there's a big I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of names that don't yeah. do it anymore but he doesn't do it cowboy doesn't do it a cowboy I, doesn't I, doesn't spar full stop apparently do, and then, i i would like i don't know about now but i've i've sparred cowboy a good few times i have i, I give him about you like, sparred with cowboy loads of times yeah yeah were you training at a jackson wing yeah i, I didn't realize that well, through Cam, I went. I obviously messaged Cam and said, "You know what I mean?" And that another free pair of lad, which is fucking mental. Like he's out in Albuquerque training. I said, "Ah, oh, but I'd love to come out and train." I went out there, and I was like, "I can't remember who Cowboy was fighting, but I, I wasn't like one of his main sparring partners." But as soon as they watched me spar, because uh, what it is, it's like two cages, 
and a big Matty Daly and all the lads are sparring on Matty Daly and then you've got John Jones in the one cage and fucking Cowboy in the other cage. And like, so they watched me spar on the mats and he was like, he was like, right, jump in here, round with John Jones, boom, like a out, boom, right, three rounds for fucking Cowboy. It was like, it was, yeah, it was mental. I, I, to be fair, I was in the UFC myself at the time, but like, obviously they, they superstars in there, do you know what I mean? So it's, it, it was just mad to be in there. Like, Cowboy, Cowboy come at you hard, like, how, like he, like when he was spar with him, he come at you like it was a fight. And then like John Jones, who's, who's obviously the, the best to ever do it, spar, I'd done plenty of rounds with him and he was like, he was like, so I think he knows what level he's at. So he's like, he wasn't, he's not trying to knock your head off. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy though. Did you realize you done that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was out there. I was out there. I done, I done two camps out at Jackson Wings. I done one. I done one just to go out there to see what it was like. So it wasn't a camp. It was a go out there. I, I was out there for about six weeks with Cam. For, <laughs> um, I hadn't seen Cam since Free Para. Uh, on the, on like one of the first nights I got well the first weekend I got there, we we went out on cowboy's boat it, like out in some lake doing fucking uh, what was it called waterboarding thing on the back of a ski, and then on the when we drove back from the lake, me Cam and this other lad went out, and a guy a guy pulled out a gun and pointed it in Cam's face like as and Cam was like you know trying to fight this man who had a gun in his face go go oh, fuck you you know like just a mental rage <laughs> like, what was like, the situation like, why did he pull um, a, why did he pull uh, a gun we, it was like outside a nightclub outside a nightclub and it was like cat if you ever have Cam on yeah he's best off to he's, explain okay, he's been on once he's been he? on once he's Is a he? fucking renegade yeah man. yeah he's well, been on well, once. that's what it was like that night he was kicking off this guy out of and it, it was like that was like my first night in Albuquerque I was like I was like this is fucking <laughs> I, was like, I don't want to be around you long but yeah it's just funny I was, I was mental man he was like literally running at the guy who had a gun pointing at him and go fuck on they shoot me then you stupid <laughs> Like, oh, That's fucking hell, welcome to America. Yeah, fucking hell. <laughs> I think it was over, it was like we was in a queue to get in a club and I think the guy was arguing who was missing and I think Cam said to him, do you know what I mean? It was one of them sort of things, like, but fucking funny. Well, he goes, Cameron goes out there regularly, doesn't he? Or he was yeah, doing yeah, before yeah, this. He, he, he goes out every he, he, couple he, he of times a year, did he not? Yeah, he was, um, but he's out in America now, but he's training, like, he, he, I don't know where he's sort of, like... Cameron sort of, is? Yeah, yeah, he's he's in the UFCPI in Vegas at the minute. Like literally today, I seen him post stuff. Up. Hang on, he's been signed, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he had Fuck one sake, fight. I forgot about yeah, that. He's been fined. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. not fought yet, though. Yeah, yeah, he fought. He fought once. Oh, he did. He fucking lost. Fight out on fight out, fight island. Good Bastard, boy, he yeah. fought. To be fair, but I I don't think he's matched up yet. But he's um, I'm sure he said like he's basically. He's ready yeah. to go again now, so... Yeah, it was a shit loss, actually. I remember, yeah, yeah. my memory's fucking terrible. Yeah, that, is, yeah. The, the, the kid he fought is actually good, like, you know what I mean? And and, and Cam, Cam's, you know what I mean, is his first fight in the UFC, but a lot of pressure. And because he got that social media presence sort of thing as well, like, he puts a lot of pressure on himself with it, so, you know, he's one of them ones. And he's a complex individual. I think he'll rip it up. I think I think, I think think he'll rip it up. I think, be, I think he's going to do well. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but the thing is with that, that kind of weight class it's always exciting like yeah. it's, 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 it's so quick yeah. like, it's oh, like it's yeah. like they got small kid chipping the shoulder syndrome haven't they the whole, all of those sort of lightweight and down he's, he's, weight classes yeah yeah band, band and weight he's at any and then yeah all the small lads are good and then you've got like, the big lads who just hit hard <laughs> that's, that's so way fun to watch like so question on big lad on the weight stuff what uh, what's harder the camp the fight camp, the weight cut, or a five round or a three round fight. Fuck enough. The weight, the, 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 the weight, the weight cut. It, if you look at me, even fucking hell, I'm like in the least shape out of anyone I ever fight. And cardio wise, I don't know whether it's a, I don't know whether it's because because of, of the the reg or whatever. But cardio wise, you you you'll never see me blowing out like three rounds and I'm ready for another two straight away. Not 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 a drop. I never struggle with cardio, but fucking cutting weight. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, I'd like, well, the way we used to cut weight on free power is like horrendous. Like I used to fight 81 on the same day. I, I can't make 84 day before weighing now. So it's like, it's, um, yeah, cutting weight's the worst thing in the world. But if I, if I fought at my natural weight, the middle weight's are bigger than me. So if I fucking... What's your natural weight? My natural weight, yeah, like 94, 95. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it, that's like big lumps, like, 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 93 is light heavyweight in, in in MMA, and I'd have to. So I, I, so if I fought at 93, 
I'd be fighting like John Jones's weight than that, and and they are fucking huge. So one of the one of the Patreon questions is on the subject. One of the Patreon questions was um on weight, and it was about uh, between fight weights. So I think the observation <laughs> I think the observation was it was again Sean McAuliffe. I think the observation was um, that uh, there was at one point you had to cut seventeen or twenty kilos. I think it was like one hundred six down. Uh, Fucking eighty three or eighty six, something like that. And the observation was, um, uh, why do fighters, why do the fighters allow themselves to 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 cut about just normal cutting about weight, and so high, when they've got to cut so much because seventeen or twenty kilos is fucking batshit crazy. Yeah, yeah, That's mental. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, mental. It's, it's, it is mental, but like it's no defence, right? But at the same time, it is like. We've got to bear in mind, right? So, do you know, January 31st, just gone, was 12 years since my professional debut, right? Right? 12 years in January, January 31st was my 12 year debut, right? So, if if I, what do you think I could walk around at fucking 13 stone since, <laughs> since I was like 18 years old? 13 stone if i could walk around at 13 stone and be my natural fight and bear in mind if i was if i was walking around at 13 stone they'd want me to fight at fucking 12 stone that's how it works so do you know what i mean because if you if you can cut weight you cut weight is i should i should never go that big i should never go that big but the time you want about where i went like like 106 i was out injured for a year didn't even know if i was coming back because of because of injuries um I mean, like I said, I I done all the time, all the time with the Paras, all the time as a pro fighter. My body's like, you know, even though I'm only 31, my body's, it's, I'm looking to finish my career quite soon because of the battering I've had over the years. Like, I mean, if I was, if I was lucky enough to only be 10 fights deep, only be 10 fights deep and then like, I could, I could keep going for a few more years, but I end up fucking 35 fights deep and is. And and uh, and fucking two tours of Afghan and fucking everything else I've done with the art like all them things combined is like you know I mean you you can't you can't live like that twenty four seven you got like you have your off time where you fucking where you gain a load of weight you fucking go out and enjoy having food be messes go out you know and have drinks and that you you gotta do that because I used to fight like four times a year three months camp. That's that old year gone. That's that's my that's your life, which which sounds good to some people. But I'm telling you, wait until wait until, wait until I'm twelve years into that fucking. That's your life. You soon start thinking, fuck this. Do you know what I mean? Which is what I did. I thought, oh, there's it. Like you know what I mean? I'm constantly on a diet. I'm constantly in the gym. I, I you know what I mean? I'm constantly fighting. I'm like like. You you get to the point where you're like, oh fucking hell. Do you know what I mean? It's like how long can I keep doing this for? Especially like when you get injuries and that, and it's like sometimes the money's really good, sometimes the run money's really shit. It's like wait you mean how how do you get how do you live like that? It's it's not that's, again, that's why I'm saying it's it's not the best creator to really wanna go down, but if you enjoy fighting, go for it. Mm. No, yeah, I see what you're saying. And uh, the money's an interesting one because you were you when you signed with the UFC, it was pre Reebok deal, right? No, they just it just oh, came. Yeah, it just came. Oh, it had just come. I yeah. remember. I know if you, you were asked about the sponsors and that. Oh no, no, it was no, nothing uh, specific. Why? What do you think I was going to ask? No, no, just I was going to say about the money wise because the sponsors because, um, yeah, they it, the Reebok deal did kill so much of it. Like, yeah, like you lost a lot of money for well, it. Well, we I yeah, but fucking shout to Luke Hardy, and. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to my ex-wife, strangely, because we had uh, <laughs> we had the uh, we had when I'm, I'm when <laughs> when because uh, we when when I because I set up a security company with Luke, and then and my wife at the time, and we sponsored you in Bama. Yeah, remember? Yeah, we yeah, sponsored you yeah. in Bama. I remember. I you, still got all my old banners. That's what I have to do. Have you? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, it'll yeah. be on there. Yeah, it'll be on there. The yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll that. And then, and then, because I remember, I remember the conversation with uh, Luke and going, right, we, we listen. We need to speak to Shaky. We need to nail down 
a sponsorship deal with Jack. It needs to be at least for a year because I'm telling you, it's going to sign with the UFC and then we just carry it over. And so, like, the idea being, like, our our company name is on you and then you get signed by the UFC and then, oh, we've got a fucking bar, like, a, yeah, yeah. you paid, like, bargain money. Yeah. Anticipate you're gonna get signed yeah. UFC, and then the Reebok deal came out like fuck, can't do it. No, yeah. it's not the guard, bastard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Reebok deal killed everyone with the sponsorships, man. Yeah. They did. Right. No, but did, but did they? How's it working now, though? Because uh, I, I was money, listening money, to the Cody money. Garbrandt um, podcast with Joe Rogan, which has just been which has been released, and Cody was saying he's got good sponsors on board, but yes, yeah, how's so, it so be, Well, basically, yeah. You can't. I can still be sponsored by other people, but I can't wear it on my shorts in 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 the cage. So. And you can't mention it if you're doing UFC press publicity. Stuff. Right, I remember right, one right. of the best examples is fucking um, Matt Mitrione was doing a was was doing a press conference, and obviously you got to wear all Reebok cage. Like they make you they before you walk out to the weigh-ins, they come around and check your pants. They, they make sure you've got... Pants, pants? Yeah, your what, pants. underwear? Yeah, make sure you've got Reebok pants on. Underwear. Check your socks, yeah, 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 underwear, like... The Americans will listen to this. Yeah, pants. oh, yeah. Pants, yeah. pants. <laughs> pants, like trousers. Yeah, yeah, no, but... but fucking weirdos. <laughs> they wouldn't have got this far. They yeah. would have switched off when you were yeah. talking. Like, yeah. what the fuck <laughs> language are you talking <laughs> Yeah, two Welsh people speaking to each other get worse, doesn't it? I'm all right in a minute, <laughs> Lang uh, accent-wise. But yeah, go on, yeah, so... Yeah. So they come around... And check, make sure that everyone. But Matt Matrione, you turned up to a press conference, and he had Reebok uh, joggers on, fucking pants, boxers, um, t-shirt, and he had a pair of Nike Max trainers on, and <laughs> and they made him take it off, and he sat there barefoot, like barefoot in a press conference, and the caption was on on the picture it was like. Oh uh, yeah, they they want him to wear Reebok to make him look like professional in an outfit. Like uh, nothing screams more professional than a fighter sat there with fucking barefoot. Because like, <laughs> you know I mean? he couldn't, because he wasn't allowed to wear his trainers to a press conference. Like it's fucking, it is a con. All that happened was the UFC was making more money out of sponsor. Reebok are paying the UFC, and we getting a shit. I think I was on five thousand dollars, which sounds nice. Uh, uh, per what? Fight per fight. Yeah, so like. Or be pr after the deal with Reebok, yeah. Like so, that's that's what I was getting off Reebok. Obviously, I got other sponsors. I got other sponsors, but people are not willing to pay a massive amount of money when they're not going to be watched by millions of people. They all they get is me putting on Instagram. Oh, fuck, thanks for my sponsorship. Do you know what I mean like? Do you know like when you sponsored me? I had a big banner behind me, and it was on my shorts and stuff like that. Yeah, people want that, and it, some some small businesses do it just. You, you know, just to help the fighter out. That's, that's what it. Is. That's what it normally is. But you know, a lot of them start to get to the point where they're like, "Fucking hell, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't giving this boy a couple of grand." If I, you know, I mean, he's gonna say thank you on Facebook. Fucking fuck that. <laughs> do you know what I mean what, what, like? Which I understand. Which because I, I wouldn't fucking do it either. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's a it's a weird one. It's re but you got to wear all the Reebok stuff, and then you get paid that money each each fight, which which. Obviously, I, my first fight in the UFC, I was Reebok, so I never got to experience it. But from people I know, I know well, are they telling me that they was earning fucking... Oh, mega they, they, much, they was earning like 50 grand out of sponsorship, 50 grand out of sponsorship on their fight, and then they, you, you're having five years, you're thinking... Oh. Mega bucks. And, but the companies that got on board with that were switched on, motherfuckers. So do you remember that company called... It was something fasteners. Uh, this is actually... I'm actually not... I'm actually gobbling off about how good this company were at the marketing. I can't remember the name. <laughs> uh, so it was something Brilliant. fasteners, wasn't it? It was, uh, it was something fasteners. It was, some, it was in red letters and always near seed. Always see it. Oh, shit. Something fasteners it was. And that was the name of the company. I remember looking. I mean, who were these? See these names everywhere. All the time. I've seen this big red letters all the time. I remember looking them up. And they made some random... And this is a company who made some random like bit of just some some component part of some manufacturing process what the fuck are they S something fasteners but they'd gone oh, let's tap into something here and get our fucking name everywhere i think i've seen I they think made I've, mega bucks man. i think i've seen a thing on youtube talking about some of these random sponsors that done the ufc in the early days and they went big off it like so yeah it's fucking mental, fucking mental. 
Um, corn nuts as well. I can remember that as well. It was corn nuts, some random like, little popcorn thing. And I was on all the fighter shows, corn nuts. Corn nuts <laughs> yeah. So question for you. Uh, patron, patron question. Um, uh, let's look it up. So questions from my patrons. And it was... Uh, who would you who who would you like to get into the octagon with and why? I wonder whether that's like well, past or present sort of thing. Is it? it's like anyone? Oh, who? Anyone? Uh, you, I, uh, it doesn't matter. Anyone? To, well, to be honest, with you, like no, not in the. But I obviously love Mike Bisping. Like, yeah, but you know, I'd love to fight him as in. Cause he's just a tough gun, and we'd have. <laughs> That'd be carnage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be lots of blood and lots of yeah. And, and he's Bisping. a brilliant, yeah, and he's a brilliant fighter. And, and I, he always every time I'm at a show, he'll speak to me, and he's a, just a fucking nice guy. Like, but <laughs> sounds fucked up. Well, he's a really nice guy. I'd love to fight him. <laughs> but but no, I would like I would like I I I that's like a legend. I mean, you're the 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 first right real UK guy to go win a title. The biggest name, and you know what I mean. I just think yeah. His dad is ex-military. Is he? And yeah. his, his, do you know what? I seen him. Seen his him dad was Queen's regiment, I think. His, his, but his brother, right? Two seconds. I'm gonna call. Oh. I gotta call him, Mrs. <laughs> uh, Can I get some ice? Is that uh, all right? Uh, Sorry. Hi, uh, I might go for a minute. Anyway. Broke the seal of night. Oh, you wanna go to the toilet again? <laughs> yeah. Go on, go to the toilet. Sorry. I got a. Uh, I got Jack. Go to the toilet again. I got Jack's missus just grabbing some ice. We got us. We got an assistant in the studio today. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. And we drink in uh, Jack Daniels and Coke, which we haven't drank since uh, the time when Jack and I were still serving in Colchester in some dodgy clubs, pubs. With the sugar. Cheers. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Uh, Tom works for NHS. Shout to NHS. Yeah, I'm at, I'm at a loss here. Yeah. So, if we point for Jack to come back. I always thought I'd be prepared for this moment if someone left the studio to go for a wee. But I'm not. Uh, come, on. come on, Jack. Yeah. How was your experience going of the HOS studio and podcast? Is it? <laughs> Are you learning? Are you learning about Jack? Um, oh, where were we? Oh yeah, so Jack, Michael Bispin, yeah. Are you? Yeah. Uh, so he's he is on. He is a target. I would love to get him on the podcast actually. Uh, uh, yeah. Bispin. Um, for much the same reasons as chatting to you, just fucking uh, that that <laughs> that brawler, that brawler attitude. What do you think? Here's a question for you. So. You're getting smashed by punches, right? You've got a reputation for being able to take a punch. You don't get knocked out. Like you can get, then there are people who can just take it, and there are people who just can't, just fucking get dropped yeah. on the spot, <laughs> drop it like a heart, right? So, in those situations, when you were toe to toe and you were brawling and you were going one for one, what do you think is keeping you on your feet? Is it is it adrenaline keeping you on your feet, or is it a, is it more of a physiological thing where my brain just doesn't get switched off? Lack of lack of the brain. <laughs> no, I um. <laughs> no, because it's, it's it's interesting. Well, it's because like, every you know, it's, it's a science. It's a science to it, right? People know if you clock the jaw at the right point and like that good angle, left to right, and you switch that nerve, you're gonna get you're gonna get your lights knocked out. It don't happen with you though. Yeah. Well, well, well everyone says, oh, you got a good chin. We all got the same fucking chin, haven't we? We all got the same. <laughs> you change your chin. You like everyone? Oh, you got a good chin. It's not. It's I don't know. It's like you can either take a dig or you can't. It's like it pissed me off in my last fight. That that guy, he was like in the middle of the fight. He was going, "Oh, why won't you know his fucking ridiculous American accent like what they was do?" Saying? Oh, uh, he's, he's going, he's going. Like go, do, do you know what? Right? I didn't like. I, hang, I, on, I, 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 hang on, disclaimer. I didn't like him anyway before the fight started. And I said, <laughs> "Oh no, it's going to get worse because he's fighting Jack." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fucking hate this do, dude. Do, do, do you know? Do you know what? Right? I I also I, even after the fight, I still speak to the guy now, right? And I don't speak to no because I'm an horrible cunt. <laughs> Because I'm an horrible cunt. I don't really speak to any any of it. Like whoever I fight, whatever. I, like I don't fucking. It is what it is. We've had a fight, and okay, we ain't buddies anymore. Like you know what I mean? Like it. But but anyway, I still speak to him. He actually ain't a bad guy because he's a weirdo. He's a bit like me. He 
he just likes to scrap, but he pissed me off in the fight because he keeps going. He's like, you're this fucking ridiculous American ass. And go, why won't you drop? It's like, you don't fucking hit that. Hard. That's why, like, do you, do you know, he like kept screaming, oh, like, why, oh, why won't you drop? And so I was like, because like, you hit like a fucking five year old, you can't, like, fucking, you hit, he might have been cut to me and stuff, but he wouldn't hurt to me. It's like, I've been, I've been on free power boxing team and I've had fucking Sean Osfield punch me. <laughs> so, Sean Osfield punch me in the face. I tell him what fucking hurts. Like, you, you, there's no such thing as a fucking good chin. It's like, it's either a shot that'll knock you out or, or shot that won't knock you out. And I just, just you know, half of these guys don't hit hard enough. It's like, like I said, but. <laughs> As mad as it is, when I'm training for an amateur fight with free power rocks, I just get it by fucking Errol, Errol and fucking Sean Osfell. Fuck, we want to talk about getting hit hard. You <laughs> so quickly know that like, they're the ones who are punchers, you know what I mean? They're people who are going to hurt you with shots, like, it's fucking, yeah. But, you know, it's, can you, can you, is it, do you think it's possible to condition yourself to take big hits? No, I, I've seen all these mad things with, because they reckon it's something to do with your neck and stuff as well. Like, you know, like the pout, like the strength for your neck. And then you see all these people doing weights on their heads and all like that. It might be, I've not looked into the science of it, but it might be true, but I just think it's bollocks. I think you can either take a shot or you can't. I think it's the same as you're either a puncher or you're not a puncher, because you can train as hard as you want. Do you, know, you see all these guys doing the fucking Olympic barbells, go bo bo, like trying to strengthen up their arm? But you either a puncher or you're not. Some boys end punchers. Some people are, some people are gonna are always gonna be destined to be a, a boxer, slick, moving on bum. And, and, and then some people are gonna be destined to do that, and some people are gonna be a puncher who just like, if they catch you on the chin, they're gonna be fucking sleep. That's is in my eyes, you either sort of born with the one or the other, and is. Do you know what I mean? You, you're not, you might be unlucky if not pull my fuck all. You might be the one who can't box or get fucking punches. Fucking, you know, shit happens. Like, but, um, yeah, no, I just think, I think, like, um, I don't think you can train your chin. I don't think you can train your punching power. I think it is what it is. Obviously, you can get better at anything. You can you can do little bits to enhance anything, but I think you, you, you that's either about it or it ain't. Like, if you if you get in, I know boys who are really good boxers who are you know, weak to the body. If you hit them to the body, you'll you'll always hurt them. Like every time you catch them to the body, and they might be shredded the fuck and whatever is like, they just naturally weak to that body. And don't matter how many fucking setups, how many things they do for their conditioning, they just can't take a shot to the body. And it's like I I just think. It's your body. You, there's not a lot you can do about changing it. Like, mm. yeah, it's interesting. I started. Uh, I know what you mean. I think it's a technique thing. I I understand. I got I got, I got two daughters, right? One can kick a football. Yeah. And the other one can also kick a football, but I would not pick her for my team. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I, I, <laughs> I, I was I was the kid that wasn't getting picked for the team. I was, uh, I was and 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 you can't uh, and you can't teach like you can say okay this is how you should swing your leg this is how you should connect with the ball and this is you know blah 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 but unless it all clicks as in you, you, I I see what you're saying it's like the same with punching um, I do pads with the girls both my daughters yeah. One is slightly better than the other. Yeah. One can throw punches, the other can't. And and I'm telling them both the same thing. Same with the football. You tell them both the same things, but, what but one is better than the other. And all that is is just the relationship of the brain to the body. Yeah. That's all it is, and but, everyone's but, different, right? But it's, it's, it's the same as, like, do you know, like Anthony Joshua, go go into boxing. He, he only had, like, so when people go into the Olympics, like, when, when, when people... When, put it over. Yeah. yeah. When when people go into the Olympics, they've normally had like fucking 200, 250 amateur fights. Do you know that sort of level? They, you know, they've done all the world championships. They've done all these big tournaments, everything. Yeah, Anthony Joshua went in. I think it was like forty odd amateur fights, which is like fucking. I think it might have been lads on the boxing team was more. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and and he only started boxing at like do you know like say say he made it big when he was like twenty. He only started boxing like when he was like eighteen or something like that. It's, like I said, it's a relationship. How you take it on? It's like it, you could be doing it for ten years and be okay, or someone could be doing it for one year and be fucking shit hot. It's how you take the things, isn't it? I think. Mm. Yeah, how have we gone to that conversation? Because you, because you, because you was on about 
one of your daughters progressing and listening and taking on what you told her quicker than others. What I'm saying is, the oh, same no, is going oh to yeah, gym. sorry, yeah, no, no, it's not that one took it on quicker. It's that no. one's body is good at this, yeah. the other one's is good at that. So, uh, and again, it's a, it, it's like uh, people are innately good at things. It comes back to the the, the fucking. It's one thing want to be a fighter. It's one thing want to be a rugby player. It's one thing want to be a football player. It's one thing want to be a fucking singer. <laughs> it's like mega. You can put all the effort in the world, but sometimes to be top level, to be in the UFC, to be on, I can say on top of the pops, then can, fit, can fiddle. <laughs> no, to be you know a, a platinum record seller. It, it has to be something else, and that's something else. Doesn't it's an additional little bit of luck. It can just be all the genetics line up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it can be that. You know, a, a prime. Ex in fact, a prime example of that is getting knocked the fuck out. It's like some people get switched off, lights get switched off. Yeah. The like of what the Carl Noon fight I referenced it earlier. It's like I'm watching that fight and going, Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god and then the last round I'm going, Oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Fucking right. How is it and and the last fight you had it's like how are you not how are your lights not going out? Whereas my lights would go bang, <laughs> good night. It's it's um issue it's a common issue of genetic makeup. Uh yeah. The environment which you're born into, and then what your consciousness is and the aspirations you want to you you fucking move towards. Would you? Would you recommend um, joining up to your kids? Yeah. Oh, see, I got I got a took a massive fucking dive. <clears throat> fucking digress there massively. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I um. Well, I got a daughter, and like obviously, I I'm, got two daughters. I, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm like right through and through as well, like turning the mentality. So in my head, I wouldn't want my daughter to join the army. If I had a son, you wouldn't. I, no, Why? no, I just, I, um, <laughs> I tell you, I'd probably tell her to join fucking RAF if if I was ever going to go to an army. Why is that? Because I just think they looked after better than the way we was looked after, and I, f you, I think you probably, you probably agree. Do you know the benefits for the shit that we done? For the shit that we done, we it, like it. It's only when you get out and you start doing shit for yourself that you start getting a bit of benefits. But do you know, being a para and doing fucking Ali shit, what we used to think was Ali. When you get out, it it don't mean shit to anyone, do it? It's, what, what difference? What, you use a use a sniper doing all sorts of stuff with with, with the reg, right? What, what difference do it make when you get out? It don't make a fucking. You, you, yeah, cheers, but he fucking goes like the shells in Tesco's. Don't mean fuck all, do it? Do you know what I mean? I, I agree. I agree. It, 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 it it's uh, on very rare occasions it makes a difference what unit you came from. When ignoring special forces, right? So sorry, special forces, ignoring you, right? But ignore ignoring that aspect. But it, most often it makes very little difference what unit you came from. To the per, to third parties. However, what well, does make a big difference is to to I think it makes a big difference to you thinking about what you you came from. So uh, what I think about Power Edge and probably the boot next thing you too, um, maybe PF is that we have a psychological advantage. Of, is that we've been conditioned, I'm not more brainwashed, but we conditioned and we've been taught to think that we are better than everyone else. <laughs> now, I'm going to leave that conversation there because I, I, right? Because I don't want to lose half my fucking listener, bit, <laughs> but that's where we're at, right? And so, having that in the back of your mind, oh, I come from a, a really like top of, uh, top of the tree thing, it helps with confidence. But I think that is the same case for the military in general. Just the fact that uh, we go through hardships, generally speaking, that uh, civilians don't, means that we, it's the reason why you know you put an eight, you put an eighteen, you put a nineteen-year-old. If you put a nineteen-year-old uh, Jack Marshman in Power Edge Depot or fucking whatever, imagine Jack Marshman went for Raff Edge or went for um, <laughs> <you know? laughs> or went for the Royal Anglians or whatever 
He put that 19-year-old Jack Marshman against 19-year-old Jack Marshman who was an avatar and didn't join up. There's a significant difference there, even like six months in or a year yeah, in, yeah. and then compared it on. You know, um, there there is an there is there's a it's you get mental fortitude from it, and and that that mental fortitude you can even if you take all of the hardships away of the stuff that we go through, uh, hard training and fucking hard operations and all all that all the stereotypical stuff that or ex-military go yeah that's why we're fucking mega and sif pop of shit which is not the case but that's you know yeah, a lot of the time yeah, that's what that's how the uh the relationship is perceived you take all that away the hardship stuff just the fact that we're experiencing stuff that is different to most other people anyone that exper- anyone in in the world that you that experiences stuff that is is unusual different to most other people, you earn an advantage. You earn an advantage. Yeah, straight yeah. off. But straight off the bat. You know, you grew up and um, and you're involved in some fucking hideous accident. Your, your dad murders your mum. <laughs> right? <You're> in, <laughs> I've had too much whiskey. <laughs> you earn an advantage. I told her dad the old. Shit the bed. But, but uh, that, that, you know, you, you earn an advantage straight away. Different. Different unusual circumstances. You know people, and I know people who have never left the village. This is classic Wales stuff. It's probably classic Northern England stuff, and probably classic Scotland outside of Glasgow, Edinburgh, and Dundee stuff. Yeah, yeah. People that have literally never left their town. They've never gone out of Scotland or Wales. They've never done it. They've never experienced anything else. And how can you expand as uh, you can? How can you expand as a person? How can you look to um, uh, achieve more than what you think? Why are you looking at that? But I was going to say, but do you not think that the, we are uh, we are on the no, fucking Jack no, Daniels and no, no, we're on the Jack no, Daniels and Coke no, train here? No, man. no. But do you not think that there's, pe- there's people like that in the Reds? <laughs> yeah, I know. Fucking hell. You saw I'd rob you for the door. No drug testing. <laughs> Yeah, no. Do you not think um, <clears throat> that it's people like that that are in the people in the rage? Do you know they've left their little towns, joined joined the rage, and then that's all they they don't want to do anything other than oh they rage through and through. It's like do you know, obviously you you've gone on and like like uh, same as me. It's plenty of us that have done that, but it's so many lads in the rage that. Will never do anything other than be on free para. But why? But, why is that though? And and and, 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 and it's an important one. It's a, it's a good point of conversation, actually, Jack. And it's an important one. And it's not just red centric. It's anyone. So they have joined up and they've gone Royal Anglians. It's all they ever know is Royal Anglians and fucking yeah, Royal yeah, Anglians yeah, through, yeah. through or Raffles through and through or Royal Welsh or fucking guards or um, rifles or yeah. green jackets or whatever through and through. Why? So why do those people do that? It's hard to explain this. Like, it's well, it's a brainwash mentality, and everything. Like a lot of them are brainwashed. No, from I don't think. Like, no, I don't think it's a. I think. I think we target the brainwash sometimes, and you go, "Oh, fucking brainwash." But what I think in reality it is is, you've got. If you look at in, if you look at a person like that, okay, which is arguably as in some aspects, right. You look at that. You're looking at a person's life, okay, which is just normal life all the way through. Okay, so they go normal life, normal life, normal life. Join up, right? They join up, and then all of a sudden, they've got most of their life. That that door, that that door. If you put that handle to horizontal, horizontal, pull it closed, and then push it down. No, no. So keep it horizontal. Down. That's it. Down. There you go. Uh, so uh, they have normal, normal, normal. Then they join up. And they've got a whole period of life which is completely unusual, right? And there, and it's like oh. X, Y, uh, John Smith is in the army or RAF or Navy or whatever. And that that makes them, that gives them something remarkable about them. Okay, that is, and, and the reason I say that is uh, the reason that's relevant is because these are for the people this affects is they think there's nothing remarkable about them. They think they are. They incorrectly think they are worthless. A just fucking just cannon fodder person in life, yeah. And then they join up, and they all of a sudden have relevance. There's something different about them, and they get attention for it, as I did, as you did. 
as I did as you did when you join up and they get attention for it and and there's something special about them and people want to speak to them and they, they've got something different to talk about and blah 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 and then they leave and what happens when they leave? <laughs> They're yeah. back to the same and all they've got to cling on to all that they all, uh, what they've done is they've pinned everything that uh, everything that underpins their existence and what makes them is entirely the military and in fact when you're in the military you are you become your value in life becomes completely extrinsic so what i mean is before you and i joined up you just lived you cracked on you got a job or you went to the gym or you fucking played rugby or football or whatever and then but when you get in so you get rewards from that right just general like it's just, just rewarding be part of a group but when you join up all of your rewards your what what keeps you going as a person is extrinsic it's your instructor in depot telling you yeah fucking well don't tell you well done it's not getting, <laughs> it's not getting battered is it and then when you get in you know it's it's it it's uh it's controlling the team or being part of the team doing the right thing for your section commander or it's all extrinsic it's all extrinsic rewards promotion fucking all that shit and then when you leave all that disappears again because you don't you're not constantly getting indications of where you sit in society or your community does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah does that make sense no it does yeah okay <laughs> it's like when you when you when you're in the army you get your what is it like three months every three months you get your little report telling you where you sat in where you sat how you doing how you doing yeah. you don't get you don't get that on tv street you don't you are yeah, yeah. the well, bottom the, third <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you follow that on instagram the bottom third yeah, yeah, that's exactly. fucking brilliant but I, yeah, I was in that crew. <laughs> uh, no, I um, yeah, this is it's one of them ones, isn't it? It's like I said, when you get to Civvy Street, it's it's all off your own back then, and it? it's like and then no one tell you whether you're doing good or bad or you know what I mean. But obviously, with, with what I do, it's a bit different. It's like you know if you're doing good or bad because like one time you're winning, one time you're losing, so you know if you're doing good or bad, like so, and then so. And so hard for me, like, but I understand how some of them struggle when they get out, like. Yeah, I need a piss. This is also a piss. <laughs> Jeez. Right, so I don't switch it, don't, don't forget, I don't switch it off. So I'm going to go for a piss. I want you to, I want, while I'm having a piss, which took all of about a minute and a half, we're going to be done soon, by the way. Um, can you, uh, can you talk through your military career? So start when you, when you joined up and then just dot through your ops. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. You're gonna be talking to yourself, mind. Yeah, I got it. I got, right, it. got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Happy. And not to yourself. Talking to the masses. Yeah. Remember. Yeah. Uh, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it, yeah, I'm yeah. nervous. <laughs> what do you say again? Talk to your military. Yeah. I um. Yeah. So joined the army 2007. Uh, joined the army in 2007. My first tour of Afghanistan was 2008. Second was. 2010, um, I boxed in like multiple championships with three para, all the way from 2008 all the way up to like 2016 maybe. <coughs> um, yeah, different courses I done. I done the, the PTI's course, uh, junior NCOs Carter. Um, yeah, uh, done machine guns, Carter. Uh, just a, most of the things you do when you power edge, really. I'll do surely. I'll do surely. I, I can't keep talking myself much longer. <laughs> I'll drink. It shouldn't be too much longer now, I don't think. Yeah. No. Stop completely. No, not completely. You're right. Cold. What did you get to? All of it, but <laughs> bullet points. Yeah. Right. Question for you. So we're at. Um, not we. You. You were. Uh, yeah. You got a nut. 
you joined up at 17. Military, fighting. But now, you're like in bog standard, you experience in bog standard civvy mode as well. What's it like, um, what's it like planning, long-term planning? Like uh, pl career planning after, for after the fight career, when that finishes? How is that going? Obviously, you you're doing like you're looking at security, which is fucking good move. Yeah. Um, for your background and what you do, I mean, the UFC fight there, people fucking snap you up. How you find what's what's your experience so far? Yeah, obviously, fucking now, you ever ever think it's going to be um, <clears throat> Kevin Costner the bodyguard, don't they? They all think that's what, that's why ever think CP is like. It's not. Obviously, it's not that like at the minute of fucking doing stupid jobs in stupid parts of the country that should end, uh, end up too much. But, um, uh, there we, uh, uh, and you're about the hundredth person to say to me, oh, you know, your background, fuck, you're going to be snapped up. I haven't been yet. <laughs> so, but, but I, like, I understand I've, I've not been doing it that long for it uh, to be picked up yet. But I'm hoping. I can move on to something a bit more sec because the jobs I'm doing at the minute are really not security oriented, which pisses me off. It's like you feel like do, do, no, no, <laughs> no. But do, do you know, like when it's it's not the route you want to do. I'd rather be more security personnel than mucking out stables. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like that's the sort of work that I'm in at the minute. But yeah, it's the best work, and that's. No offense, that's like naivety on your part. In in the same way as I don't understand like MMA career, get, get into, I'm just asking about it. It's like I understand security, and that's but it's a, it's a rite of passage. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what I like in the way you were doing things is, I think that um, people would in your position, other people, maybe, would seek to immediately capitalize on the fact that you you're a UFC fighter uh in and they would immediately seek to capitalize on that and they would immediately think that they that they're god's gift and they should be snapped up immediately as PPO you know yeah, yeah. personal protection officer um director some fucking ninja client customer um principal you know, bodyguard straight away. When it, what I like about, and obviously before we we were talking about setting this podcast up, we were chat before. I so what I like about the way you're doing things is you have no, you you don't have those pretenses. You're fully aware, and it's important because, again, as we were talking before we can before we we start recording, it's like uh, there's a lot of shit you got to understand. The same way as like same way as with uh, the MMA, you you can you can learn to fight. You can you can you can be taught in a fight, but then when you start fighting professionally, that's a whole different ball game. It's a whole whole there. That's a whole different world. You need to understand it before you even start trying to make a success of it. It's the same with security. It's 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 difficult. It's not easy. And uh, if you think if you can go think you can go straight into the top level, then you're completely misguided. Um, and what you, what it seems to me correct me wrong. What it seems to me like you are seeking to do is understand it. Yeah. Yeah. Understand, understand the industry, understand exactly what it is, what the what the client will want, and then prep yourself so when that job comes, you're fucking ready for it properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you have, I mean, you you downplay it, but you have got a massive a massive advantage. The reality of the fact, Jack, is that most I would say that most the highest a significant percentage of people who call themselves close protection officers or personal protection officers and bodyguards, inverted commas, do not have the required level of uh, um, uh, fighting experience yeah, yeah. and, and uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, the ability to deal with a physical confrontation. They don't have it. They don't have yeah. it. They, they don't. And it, uh, it's unfortunate, really, because it does a disservice to the industry. You were all over that. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> yeah, you've got that tick in the box, you know, yeah. and, and there's no question in there. Um, but I was your, you, you've, you, and it, yeah, like you said, you're doing, you've been doing some jobs touching into the security industry. How, what's it like going from fight work to security work? Well, do, do you know what? Just because you said earlier about, like, when you messaged me about it, like, uh, 
the thing you said to me the one on one of the messages was about not being a job snob. Like, I not being. Well, you let's say, hand that. Uh, I'm gonna ha- wait, so I'm gonna stop you there because I, I, I'm gonna hand that. That is Nick McCarthy. I pinched that saying from him. Yeah. He taught me that, and yeah. I say it repeatedly. Yeah. So Nick McCarthy, yeah. here, go on, yeah, I, yeah. It's not like one. Yeah, yeah, job snob. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not being a job snob, and like I, I don't care where I've been, like with the UFC. I'll, I'll go fucking walk, I'm walking people's dogs and fucking picking up their shit and shit like that and do it like I don't care because I'm getting an insight into where I'm going to be I know where I think I'm going to be set to go and like you keep like people keep saying oh you'll be snapped out you'll be snapped out I, I, I got an idea of where I'm going to go but I'd rather fucking learn because I've been fighting for the last so many years like you know like full time nothing else other than fighting no military no nothing like I've just been fighting so I but I'm back at square one with like you learn that scooty side of stuff. Like even even with a scooter working, like I said, with with Bill and that work work with him, like fucking you know, just learning the how to turn the alarm off and shit like that. It's like shit that seems normal, but it's like I wonder what the fuck have I ever touched one of them? Like, even transferring calls and shit like that. It's like I've never touched one of them. So I'm I you you when you said that to me the one day you said oh, don't be a job snob, enjoy it, just learn. Like, I, I took, I proper took that on board, and I was like, listen, I was like, and it's so, because I, I think at the time, when I, because I was messing, I think I was slagging the job off a bit when I was saying, a bit like pissed off, and I said, oh, well, don't be a job snob, do this, do that, do like whatever. And I took it on board because then I thought, yeah, fuck it, no, you have got to learn. The job is shit, though, right? Here's the reality of uh, security work. Like, whatever level you're at, whether you're a security guard on a fucking, I don't know some fucking site, some industrial park somewhere, like doing that high-vis vest. And I've done that, like, as I was to you, I've done it, I did that deliberately because it was, I need, I, I just wanted to keep my hand in and while I was working in the Middle East, I come back and I just keep my hand in the UK and I've, I've done it, high-vis vest on and doing shitty staggering on for minimum wage, but I did it because I want to experience, I want to understand, and plus I want to expand the network and plus why wouldn't I want to fucking earn money, right? And then... The other end of the spear, which is the 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 fucking sorry, that's that one experience. It's all shit. It is it is repetitive stuff. Yeah. Like I'm telling you, we were talking earlier about Squirrel Warren, Warren, who will be listening to this. He listens to the podcast and make like yeah. Warren, fucking big shout, to Warren X, and yeah. fucking mega bloke. Well, I'm gonna, oh, well after after speak with him, I'm obviously gonna look to catch up with him. After yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And like he is, <clears throat> I think, on my list of people who I know, he's one of the most experienced people in high end, high net worth people. Uh, protecting people, high protecting high high net worth individuals, right? It's all shit, and he will tell you the same thing, right? And if he tells you otherwise, then tell me because I'll be like, "Fucking hell, proper wrong." It's all shit, right? But it's mega on the. It's a bit like when we're in. Everything is shit, Jack. <laughs> right? But how mega is it when you're in Tofan, yeah, and you go out on a patrol and you get bumped? Yeah, you get the enemy contact, yeah, and you fucking do them in. And you yeah, you fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. you fucking wipe them out and you get back to camp. It's the same thing. Ninety nine point nine percent of it's being in the red yeah. is shit. Point one percent is oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> and it's the same with uh, security, right? But very few people get get to experience an adverse event in security because most people are at the um, baseline, they, they're not at the level close enough to the principal um, to experience uh, uh, a, a, a challenging event, or uh, uh, they're not at the level where they're they're not uh, involved in the front line because it's not always not always looking after one person. You could be looking after a, a, a venue, for yeah, example, yeah, yeah. protests, all that shit, and not at that level, right? But so very few people get experience that and then test themselves, test the metal, right? But the the most challenging thing, the 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 most uh, hideous situation for being a bodyguard, being a PPO, CPO, um, would be a physical attack on the principal. And how'd you deal with that? Yeah. Uh, that's what the well, that's not most challenging. Well, there's but that'd be most that would be most challenging for the for the bodyguard, for the PPO. But uh as in they'd have to do something. What's what's your record for P breaks, mate? For what? 
You need another Piss one. Piss bricks. <laughs> should we shut it off? You well, need another one? Yeah. I, Fucking go, hell. Go on, I'll, I'll finish off then. Or oh, is it done? Go for a piss then. Go <laughs> on, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Good, because I'm mincing my words now. Mate, you're reading me <laughs> JD and Coke. <laughs> this is three pisses. I've had, how many have I had? One. Oh, well, mm. uh, yeah, we'll finish off in a minute when he comes back in. This is uh, talking to the thin air. Still here. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to do. I need to get better at this. I need to practice this. I need to practice the guest leaving the room for piss. So you do. Uh, he, Jack is on. Uh, he's on Instagram. He's on Twitter. He's on Twitter. He's on Twitter. Yeah. He's on Twitter, he's on Instagram. Um, I don't know if he's on LinkedIn. But um, hit him up. Yeah. Before he comes back in. That's my... Uh, here he is. Fucking hell. Mate, it's hard. I've not done this before, where people have left the room. What's the matter? What are you asking? What are you asking? What's that? What are you saying? I said it's on the record. Go through. Well, yeah, no one's ever taken a piss. You're the first person. Oh, yeah, the first person. Anyway, right, we're gonna we're gonna fucking start. Closing. What have you not covered that you wanted to cover? What did you? You in, you're in a rush, yeah. Excellent. What um, talking about uh, Reg Afghan? What's your takeaway memory? Well, big shout to fucking Waters, by the way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I say big yeah, 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 Waters, yeah. It was, I, do you know what? That's one of the ones that we. Obviously, he was my sergeant, wasn't he? And then uh, I loved him a bit, like when we was here. And then I l lost contact with him. And then when I read the article, you know, because I read that online, I didn't like you. Know, I just heard I read he was fucking got it. <laughs> Shit times in it. But um, the only thing I got to say about, like, with the Afghan, it's like, it's a mad how different it is, isn't it? It's like when I went in in 2008, because I think that's the first time I met you, it was 2008. I think it was because we were probably the only two Welsh people there. <laughs> but um, who were you with in 2008? <laughs> Which company? Because I came up halfway through the tour. I came on. Do you know when we just went to sang in? It was, it was with a company. Dave Hutch and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I came then. I did like okay. fucking. Um, and I gone. Yeah. Yeah, but what I was gonna say is like the difference between like do you know like where you like you're young. I was like. On that one, I was like just turned 18 because like half my platoon wasn't allowed to go because they weren't old enough yet. So it was like, I'd like, I'd fucking, I just passed the 18 barrier. So I'd be, it was like, so I was allowed to go. So it was like, I've, I was initiated straight in free bar. I do it's like, it's mega. But um, when you were young like that, and you don't get fucking, then like, they're only two years later, like when you go to fucking like messes or family or whatever, it's like how different it is. Do you know what I mean? Like about, like when you go on to a, it's completely different when it's like when you're young, no case in the world to when you've got something. So like, I imagine what it's like when, when, when you've got a fucking wife and kids and stuff, like, and you go on to it, it's, I, I don't know how, how like the older lads can deal mm. with it. Like really, it's tough. Yeah, I, yeah, as I remember it, um, it's just part of life. You don't even question it really. Yeah. Um, I think as you go up the ranks, they've got more leniency in what you can and can't do in terms of how you steer. It depends where you are in your career as well, how you steer, how long you're going to be away and shit like that. But, mm. would, you, uh, would you recommend a, uh, an MMA career over a military career or vice versa? No, no, vice versa, definitely. I'd, rather, I'd, I'd say go for the military. It's a safe, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking hell, jump and reach for your dreams only one, but it ain't always gonna be what it's gonna what people think, like so MMA's a tough sport to be in and any sport's a tough sport to be in. But like military's tough but it's like a it's a good network to be in and you're gonna be locked after and you're gonna be constant wage, you're gonna be job you know, security. Yeah, yeah. Just like anything where you got to, where where you are the main asset is fucking you know, what I mean, it's a, you know, go wrong with that asset, i.e., fucking injuries, sank, you know, just anything, just having a shit day. You know, what I mean, like, well, it's it's all on you then, isn't it? Mm. 
So right. I, I'd say military, hundred percent. Last question to finish off with. It's a fucking big one. All right, let me bring it up. Stefan Hool. I've already warned you off with this one. Stefan Hool. <coughs> Uh, do I be ruthless? Right. So I'll read it a bit. Am I? We smashed our chat at it. Fucking Jesus. Right, like Stefan Hull. Uh, he, his question, he's one of our patrons. Views on inclusivity in MMA. Are you doing a nice order? <laughs> Views on inclusivity in MMA uh, from equal pay to the idea of mixed gender fighting. So, um, should mixed, should, could mixed gender fighting be allowed? Might be allowed. Or be enabled, not allowed, no, enabled. No, I, um, Microphone. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> no, I, um, I, I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I, th I genuinely, in my opinion, <coughs> No matter in what capacity it is, whether they're same weight, whatever, anything, but a man lumping a woman in the face is not going to be—it's not going to be all right. Like, so I, I don't, I don't agree. A man should ever fight a woman, whether or not that man now identifies as a woman, so he can lump a woman in the face. Is not, is not, no. I don't. I, I, then I don't think it's right. I just don't think it's fair, and I don't think, I don't think there'll be any promotion with. They're gonna be all right with that. What about Chrissy Cyborg? <laughs> she, she got she got a birth certificate saying she's a woman. <laughs> you know, I'll wear that birth certificate come from. I don't know, but <laughs> no, no, no. I'm playing them. She, she <laughs> no. <laughs> Dana, Dana White got into trouble for saying she looked like fucking Vandalay Silver in a dress. So, yeah, no, I, I just, I just don't think men and women fight in together. Like, I think women can fight, but you know, mix. What's the difference? So, what's what what why why? So, you you me let me explain to you. Let me give you this scenario, Jack. All right. Yeah. There is a woman, and she is your height. She is your build. Okay, here's your. She got your breeze block fucking head. There's a head, right? And she has got the same fighting experience. This is hypothetical. So, okay, she doesn't really exist. She got the same fighting experience and background as what you have. Would uh, has she? Is she equal to you in terms of fight capability? <laughs> so I'm losing half my followers now. Like, no, 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 I, no, I, I, no, I joke. Yeah, I joke. No, um. No, no, I don't. I honestly, I just can't. But why? What's the reason? I, Listen, I, I agree I, I, with you. I, I, I agree I, I, with I, I, you. I, I, can't, I can't explain the reason, but uh, I, I watch it in the gym. I watch a, 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 a purple belt girl who weighs 65 kilos roll with a purple belt boy who's 65 kilos and she gets fucked up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that's in a grappling match. That's in a little half-hearted grappling match. If he was lumping her in the face as well, it'd be... Do you know what I mean? It, it, yeah, it, 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 I, 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 I'm the same. I, 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 my, I would, I would like everyone. Have, I would love it, love it. Everyone have equal opportunity, which everyone should have. But in terms of the the female and male thing, and especially the transgender thing, I think the and again, I'm a fucking layman, right? But when I think about, um, like, I, if my daughter, like, either of my daughters, was your height build. And and fucking monk strength, and had the same background as you in fighting. I would still not want them to get in the ring with you, or the octagon with you, or whatever thing with you, or <laughs> in the street. Wouldn't want them to. And the one when I think about it, okay, well, why why do you think that, Hugh? On what scientific basis? I think well, I'm not a scientist, but one bullet point numero uno would be testosterone, and anything to do with adrenaline. Like with blokes, we pump it out. Like we, we designed to go from zero to hero, from flipping vegan to nuclear in a matter of <laughs> nanoseconds. Is a you know is a reason why we get worked up physically and get pumped and go fucking wild physically, compared to women. Generally speaking, there are obviously exceptions. Yeah. You know, it's but exceptions. you go back to 
stick Ronda Rousey, who was the tip of the spear at a time in being a fucking animal for women's MMA. Stick her in with her counterpart in in the mail. Even in 20 years' time, if you put everyone in a train together, the train together is the big one. You, you, you put women in a train of men, they're going to get closer to the capabilities of men. They won't ever get in, they won't ever get to the point of what they are truly capable of physically, because this is what I think, by the way, because they ain't able to produce the same kind of um, hormones and chemicals that men can, which are connected to survival. I'm looking at the NHS. Yeah. Correct? Correct? Am I right? No. <laughs> but that's, that's where I see it. It's like, look, adrenaline, testosterone, that's their survival, their survival chemicals, amongst other things, and hormones, amongst other things. But we do it, there's a reason, you know. It takes, it's going to take evolution of the species for us to be matched in terms of, like, scrap capability. That's my thoughts on it. And, and, and as you say, it's evidenced in what's going on. But coming back to, I had an interesting chat. So on that patron, the patron question about the transgender questions, um, Stefan, Stefan Hull, he's, a, he's ex-military and he's a, a react res, uh, disaster responder volunteer. And he phoned me after he put in the, the thing about... Um, uh, the question about transgender stuff. And what I realised was, I think, right, so, bear with me here, that there's a massive gap between the, uh, 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 so again, adrenaline, adrenaline or testosterone capabilities, producing te capabilities between male and female, right? But when you're a transgender, okay, so when you're a male, you take, you undergo um, hormone therapy, right, to get closer hormonally to being a woman. And when you're a woman going to a man, you undergo testosterone therapy to get closer to a, a man. So arguably, and I've done no scientific research on this, I thought about it yesterday, but surely a transgender man and a transgender woman must be closer together there must be less of a gap yeah, in testosterone yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, hormones than there is an, a, a man and a woman. So you want to see that which, fight. which means that... It, I'm, I'm fucking deadly serious. So which means that it is, it is potentially much fairer to have, transgen to have a transgender so sport <laughs> where it's transgender and it's irrelevant if you're transgender man or woman a man because you're pretty much fucking close but the caveat would have to be you have to be undergoing testosterone or hormonal treatment to be able to go through it because you've caused it to centre oh my god I've just been thrown off YouTube I'm telling you Twitter just thrown me off Jack's not even talking should we knock on the head? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have them points. Hey, no, but I'm no, but I'm, I'm fucking serious. I'm I'm deadly serious. Okay, I don't, I don't know how many people want to hear it. Um, how do, how, so here you go. Last question. And how do you accommodate? How could you accommodate transgender in transgender people in uh, mixed martial arts? Well, anyone's welcome to do. I just think. Like, you, you know, whatever gender you mat, is whatever gender you mat. So, so like, fighting wise, if you just want to train, it, 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 like, it's no difference to anyone else. But like, if like if, you know, I just feel um, if you if you if you born a man and that's that's what you are, that's what you should be fighting. You shouldn't be fighting a woman. Do you know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. I mean, like, fucking brutal and say like oh fuck you but it's just yeah it's a it's a, it's a difficult subject it's, hard, it's super it's difficult hard, hard, hard to explain i just don't feel it, no no i understand it and, and i understand why you don't because it's really hard much my, much my, do much my daughter fighting some guy who've grown a ponytail <laughs> do you know what i mean some guy who've got like a, a bloke who've grown a ponytail my daughter got fighting him because he's he's now identifying as do you know what I mean? Well, I wouldn't accept that and, and I go back, exactly. And, and I go back to, uh, if my daughter, like if my eldest was your height, was your weight, she had, and she had grown up in 
Tulare fucking combat <laughs> fucking gym, right? And done everything with you. And and they'd be like, right, Dad, can I fight Jack Marshman? For the, uh, I'm going to fight Jack on the weekend just for, uh, I don't know, the fucking Tulare fucking wild, <laughs> wild caveman, caveman and woman, like cave transgender title. I'd be like, no. She be right, because... He's gonna fuck you up. <laughs> he's a dude. He's, a, he's a adrenaline, testosterone. He's, he does it. He's not just doing it in the gym. He's doing it in school. He's doing. It, he's going home. He's doing. It, he's fighting everyone. And you're like, you go home. You're playing with dolls. Oh my god. Yeah, no. he's trying to kill people. I'm joking, but I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I mean, no, knock us in the head. Too much whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Get a whiskey, mate. Been a, listen. Yeah. In all seriousness, it's been an absolute fucking pleasure. Been fucking yeah. brilliant. Yeah, and uh, this. yeah, cheers for the trip, mate. Oh, well, we should do it again. Yeah, yeah. Do it again. And um, how do people follow you? What are you on? Uh, what are you on Instagram? Uh, Jack Marshman nineteen, I think. I wonder. I think it is. Yeah, I I got hacked. I did so. <laughs> I lost all my social media, but I've. You got what? I got hacked. Uh, yeah. You had a shit password. You mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like <laughs> my name one two three. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll stick all the links and things. Uh, yeah. Um, fucking sweet. Yeah. Do it yeah, again. mate. Yeah, I enjoyed it. it.